Samples of the radioactive beach in Gorapari have been taken. Now let's look at them with a the gamma spectrometer. This package contains exactly 10 grams of the brown sand. Walking over to the high purity germanium detector, that is the lead castle, and you can see the top of the detector. Just in there. And we're gonna place it in and seal the lead castle back up. The lead bricks shield the detector from surrounding background radiation. So let's turn to the software and watch the spectrum coming up. Uh, we can see a few of these very narrow peaks appearing just within seconds. Let's have a look at this very high peak here. That is from LED 212. LED 212, let's see, thorium decay chain. There it is, LED 212, daughter nucleate of thorium. Then the thorium 232 decay chain. So we found this one. Let's take a look at the others. For example, this smaller peak here. What might that be? It is from actinium 228. Have a look again, actinium 228, there it is, thorium decay chain dot nuclide. Let's display the other gamma lines, the other gamma energies that belong to actinium 228. Here we go, enable the lines, you can see them as green bars coming up, actinium 228. And just to remind you, that is within the thorium decay chain. And if we look at the spectrum, yep, that seems like we have all those little lines that belong to actinium-228. So, that must be it. We can do the same for some other peaks, of course. Now, let's have a look at the lines from LED-212. LED-212, as you remember, is in the thorium decay chain as well. And in green, in those little bars, you can see all the peaks that belong to it. And yep, seems like we're getting those as well. LED 212, thorium decay chain. Now while we're at it, let me show you what is special about this liquid nitrogen cooled semiconductor detector. You can see all those little peaks coming up, easily to tell them apart. Now, that's what makes it much different to a sodium iodide detector, which we'll have a look at now. But first, some explanations. The energy resolution depends on the type and of course also the quality of the detector you're using. For example, you could have a sodium iodide crystal in your gamma spectrometer. Then the photo peak of cesium-137, which is at 662 keV, would produce a broad photo peak that will look sort of like this. And at half the maximum height, at a so-called full width at half maximum, the peak would be about 55 kilo electron volts wide. So um, if you compare that to the high purity germanium detector, a semiconductor detector, you would have just a very narrow 2 kilo electron volts at full width at half maximum photo peak from cesium-137 here. So the energy resolution of this detector would apparently be much better than of the sodium iodide detector. And the problem with that is, if you have different gamma lines that are very close, for example at 670 keV, that would fall within this photo peak and you would not be able to really see it. Well, on this detector, on a germanium detector, you can tell apart each individual gamma lines where, let's say, the 670 keV line would appear here, or here it would be within the photo peak and thus pretty much invisible. So that's the difference between those detectors, but let's look at that in real life. This is a tiny portable gamma spectrometer, a sodium iodide spectrometer, and comparing it to the high purity germanium spectrum, you can see the much broader photo peaks as they come up here from the same source, from the sand you will still be able to get a spectrum, of course. You will still be able to see some of the gamma lines, but not all. You can see how close to, to each other they are on the high-purity germanium detector, 
and on the sodium iodide they just disappear within each other and appear as a single peak or just as a continuum. But of course there is an advantage to the sodium iodide detectors. For once they are comparably cheap and also they don't need liquid nitrogen in order to run. You can just run them at room temperature and carry them around. You just need a high voltage supply with them and a little computer such as this. While uh, the high purity germanium detector needs to be super cooled in order to be operated. So you basically need a barrel of liquid nitrogen with you. So there are portable versions of the high purity germanium detector, but of course uh, they're much more bulky and much more expensive too. So now we saw the difference between a sodium iodide spectrum and a spectrum from a high purity germanium detector in comparison. Now you've seen it too. It wasn't unexpected of course. We basically knew that there was thorium inside, but it was still interesting to see. And the next step will be to do a quantitative analysis of the sand. That means uh, using a proper geometry calibration we will have a look at the actual activity in BKRL per gram or per kilogram. So now we know what is in that sand, but we also want to find out just how much of those radionuclides are present within a given amount of the sand. So stay tuned for that.